that is a shirt. We need to dip our beaks a little. Do I look funny? Do I smell funny? Do I amuse you? All day, day long. long. All day. All day. All day long. <laughs> That is a shirt. <laughs> what I mean, a shirt! Italiano. <laughs> it's an Indian shirt. No, it's a With Sicilian. Thai. We talk about Italian wine today. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you laugh? I know you love uh, Italian wine mm -hmm. and uh, champagne. Mm -hmm. and, uh, why do you like Italian wine uh, that much? I think I love Italian red wine. So is he mixing the Italian red wine and the champagne to, to, to mix it together? Well, no, champagne is unique unless you want to compare to the Franciacorta. 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 And from that perspective, since they're similar prices, uh, in my experience, I prefer champagne by some margin. And does it mean that if somebody gives you uh, Franciacorta for free, is it okay? It's okay. Okay. Psst. <laughs> doesn't matter what you give me for free. It's okay. <laughs> Italy's got 20-something regions. And each region essentially has its own signature grape. And that signature grape is hardly shared amongst regions at all. And they are making um, such beautifully diverse wines. I have a, a love-hate relationship with Italian wines. And uh, what do you mean by hate uh, relationship? The hate relationship would be uh, some of the wines that I love are priced too high, and therefore I hate it that, I, that, they are, that they are too expensive for me to buy. When you take really great Sangiovese from the top producers in Chianti Classico or in Montalcino, and you put them up against, say, the Cabernet-based wines from closer to the coast, Bulgari, yeah. mm -hmm. and Sangiovese wines, just run rings around them mm -hmm. in terms of elegance and complexity. Mm -hmm. I have had one or two decent Sangiovese, also one or two that can take bottle age, produced in California. The most notable one for me so far is from a winery called Nocetto. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which in, are uh, in California. California. Yeah. Iron Horse has a very good varietal characteristic. And are they expensive? Nocetto is not. And the Iron Horse, I think, is a bit more expensive. I had bought a case of their wine there a number of years ago, they had bottled it unfined and unfiltered and had thrown a lot of sediment. Mm. But the wine was delicious yeah. and it was half price. And I thought, oh my God, I don't mind some sediment. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Italian wine has a relatively high acidity than uh, uh, other uh, countries' wine. Let me tell you, Jay. <laughs> oh, let me tell you. So, so it all depends upon the variety. Uh, Nerella Mascalese, uh, Sangiovese, uh, Barbera, Nebbiolo, uh, some of the uh, reds from Alto Adige, the native varieties, can have uh, very good acidity as well. Then on the other side of the coin, from Apulia and... Um, and Abruzzo. And Abru you know, so, so those wines in southern Italy, uh, many of those wines don't have very high acidity. How about uh, the case of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, from uh, Bulgari? in terms of uh, GDT. Yeah. So acid Cabernet's got, as a grape, has pretty good acidity. I know uh, you don't like uh, when uh, Sangiovese is blended with uh, Cabernet Sauvignon or uh, Merlot. And uh, why is that so? If your Sangiovese that you're working with mm -hmm. is the ultimate quality, mm -hmm. the Cabernet Sauvignon, I'm sorry to say it, for me, detracts from that quality because it does not have the silkiness, the smoothness, the elegance of the pure Sangiovese. But this is only in an environment where the quality of your Sangiovese is mm -hmm. impeccable. Otherwise, because Cabernet Sauvignon is so reliable almost everywhere where you grow it, mm -hmm. that if the Cabernet Sauvignon is really good and the Sangiovese not so much, then you can perhaps make a nice blend or even a wine that's slightly better for the Cabernet well, Sauvignon. Chianti Classico, Chianti Classico is allowed have, to have Cabernet Sauvignon. can have 10% of yeah. other grape varieties, mm -hmm. for sure. So uh, can I interject for something? What is wrong? This is a this is fr this is a Friday. That Friday afternoon, and our glasses are empty. You know, you need to go back and look <laughs> at previous videos and see how many times I've said that to him. 
Qual è questo? Let's drink. Let's have a little wine, then we can... I need some Sangiovese in my glass. We need to dip our beaks a little, to wet our whistles. I need whistles. to wet my beak. Yeah. That's the line from The Godfather. I need to wet... And then we have some... You and I have some beaks to wet. <laughs> Actually, that having been said, and you guys being so rude about our collective noses, I would like a bigger glass, please, that for those ones. That was my compliment. How big? No, no, burgundy glasses, wider. Should I get, uh, get a Sangiovese for my cellar as well? If you want. A younger the one. More, the, the more than friggin' Mary. Why not? I have a feeling it'll, I need a, it'll be three or four hours of uh, filming. <laughs> <laughs> it's Patrick, he talks too much. <laughs> you are the same. No, no, no. Peter. Which glass do you want to use? That one. This one. Thank you. <laughs> I knew it. Oh, yes. Oh. Vintage 2010. Yeah. But it's open. Yeah, I just opened it. <laughs> <laughs> what if you spot in it or peed in it? I did. <sighs> it's a fine way to spend a well, Friday, Friday afternoon. afternoon. <laughs> so we'll start with the Pella Verga. So let's talk a little bit about Pella Verga. Okay. This is a Piedmontese wine from Cadia. They make uh, the regular Piemontese varietals, uh, uh, Barbera, uh, Barolo, Nebbiolo, and a few whites as well. And Dolcetto as well. I have enjoyed uh, Dolcetto that's well over a decade old. Yeah. Well, we had one. We were expecting it to be over the top. No, no, no. It was a 2008. Not only was it not over the top, it was delicious. Yeah. <laughs> More than that, two weeks later, Jay had just popped the cork in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we tried it. And it was absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This Pella Verga is also 2008. Pella, Pella Verga is a unique grape to the commune of Verduno in um, Piemonte near Alba. So it's very brown now. So looking at the color, one would say it's over the hill. Yeah. Um, but you can see that it was always light. It's, it's, it's almost cola colored, right? Yeah, yeah. And yet on the nose, you get that uh, Piemontese character, that sort of slightly dry straw character that you also get on Barbera, and you get the white pepper. Mm -hmm. And it smells like an older wine, but it's it it doesn't smell oxidized, and it tastes better than it smells even. It's, it's a nice start. Now here's a here, question for both of you guys, right? What Italian dish would you cook with this? Artichokes. Hmm. I think that that sort of white pepper character, and there's good good acidity here. I was uh, thinking about uh, German sausage because it, it smells uh, white pepper uh -huh. and uh, because of this uh, good acidity. I would try it with um, spaghetti alla car carbonara, which is not kosher for several different reasons, right? Though the... Isn't there uh, kosher uh, carbonara? Well, it's, it's not kosher because it has, it has uh, uh, ham in it, ham or bacon. You can take out uh, ham. <laughs> So no meat. <laughs> no meat. <laughs> Just cream. Just cream and eggs. I could see this with a very plain, simple grilled lamb chop. Mm. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Something grilled over um, vineyard prunings. Mm. Oh, I'm getting hungry. Both of you, you didn't have a lunch today? <laughs> Doesn't feel like it. So I had a salad with crab. I'm a little bit peckish, shit. Yeah. Sorry about that. I feel hungry. That's right, too. you're a shitty host. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot move well because of this uh, microphone. Uh, you're tethered. <laughs> yeah. Okay, keep them going, pal. Second one. This one first, mm -hmm. the older one before the younger one. Would you explain a little bit about uh, this wine? Sure. It's come from a winery in um, Emilia Romagna called Ronchi di Castelluccio. 100% on Sangiovese. And they have, it's either three or four crews of Sangiovese, different little hills. And this one is called Ronco dei Ciliegi. So this is 1999. Uh, it's a very old bottle of wine. Use of oak, but as I recall, not too much. Mm. Like a little baby. Clean of the baby. <laughs> We're fucking crazy. We're here. You know, they got these three, <laughs> these three nuts here, and and they they've got a 
20-year-old bottle of uh, Sangiovese. Which a, isn't even from a recognized area. <laughs> right. An 11-year-old <laughs> bottle of, uh, it's unusual, the, the, the Cadia wine. The, the uh, Pella Verga. Pella Verga. I'm not sure. Maybe I need the... The Azo. Is it breaking? Azo. Is it breaking? I have a small feeling about that. So Jay was concerned that this cork was going to break. So I had a feeling that it so was broken in the middle. This is a type of corkscrew called an ISO and it should be able to take this cork out without it breaking. As you can see, masterful manipulation by Jay. Yeah, here. beautiful, beautiful job. Which is why Patrick and I allow him to, to taste with us. So uh, this, the, the ISO also had another name. In the UK, it was referred to as the butler's friend. We got this on, on video. Oh, we do. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Good job. Look at the length of the cork. Yeah. It's not the length, it's the diameter. Yeah. I felt uh, it was broken uh, here. No, no. What? Yes, you felt it, but you know why? Because I'm so sensitive. No, because you broke it. <laughs> <laughs> Still Just now you it. blame me. Just say it. <laughs> Just I saved this. <laughs> Twenty-year-old Sangiovese. Mm. You know, Sangiovese is a um, relatively thin-skinned grape. Uh, the wine tends not to be very dark-colored. Good acidity. Can have firm tannins. This is obviously darker than the previous one. Peter is drinking without any explanation. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, see, and and it's got brick changes. But you know, what's interesting is that the rim. It's almost effervescent, right? There's almost a glow to it, uh, which is which is interesting. So it's got it's it's got some almost like dried cherries on the nose, along with some autumnal underbrush, autumn. It's still it's delicate. I think it's delicious. Maybe the sweetness of death, but it there's a slight sweetness to it. I think we'll grow in the glass. There is. A a rightful gesture in uh, Italia for this kind of a wine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even though this is uh, nine years older than the previous wine, it tastes much younger. Yeah. That's a very seriously made wine. Talk uh, more things about this, this wine, please, Peter. The wine is old, obviously, mm -hmm. and it's monovarietal. It is seamless. So this is 100% uh, 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 Sangiovese. Right. There's no break in the wine from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. The fruit is a little subdued, the question being whether it's slightly drying out or whether it will develop the fruit. I rather suspect it will develop the fruit. Acidity is still very high. Uh, tannins are very well resolved. Obvious, but but very fine grained. There's some oriental spices that I sometimes get uh, from wine that's been in wood, and then that as as some of those uh, uh, wood flavors change over time, I can get some of these oriental sp flavors spices that I find to be very attractive. I think this one is excellente. And uh, but why did you uh, spit out the wine? Because we, got more, because we got more coming, <laughs> and the, the afternoon is yet young. And it would be nice if it went with food, but Jay's tethered to his microphone. <laughs> so your uh, beak is wet? It, my, yes, my, no, no, my beak <laughs> needs to be wet a little bit more. Now we each need another glass, right? Okay, no problem. <laughs> I'm feeling, I'm feeling as if my beak is wet. So, oh, so the next okay. wine actually came out of my cellar, and it's a, a Tuscan wine. Uh, uh, 2010 Castellare. Oh, it's already de San Nicola, bottled in 2014. It's interesting that it's an IGT mm -hmm. because it's got more than 10% of other grapes in it. Mm -hmm. So, this is 85% uh, uh, Sangiovetto, which is a <laughs> clone, clone of Sangiovese. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny. <laughs> Do I look funny? Do I smell funny? Do I amuse you? What's so 
f***ing funny. <laughs> All of them uh, are correct. <laughs> so we've got 85% uh, Sanjeevet though, and 15% uh, Malva Sianera. 2010, warm vintage. Then uh, you opened the bottle at your house, and yeah. uh, Peter didn't like it. Peter's always questioning, <laughs> why is the bottle open? Because I took the cork out of it. <laughs> why did you take the cork out of it? <laughs> a, a much younger S S Sanjay Vese, but still a nine-year-old uh, Sanjay Vese base wine. And again, it's, it's, it's really good. It's got that, that lean and yet ample fruit. It's a sort of almost like a contradiction. And it's minerally, mm -hmm. it's super elegant. And yet there's no rough edges on the wine. It's not bitter cherry, but it's uh, sort of a riper cherry fruit. And there's some spiciness from the oak treatment that it had. That's, the oak's very well integrated. And the color is very different from yeah. the previous one. Yeah. Again, there's a little bit of brick change at the rim. It's garnet colored and you can see through it. Yeah, now going back, the white peppers become more pronounced on, yeah. that, on that first wine. Yeah. That first wine is past its prime. This would have been better five, three, five years ago, five years ago. I'm not gonna argue with Patrick about whether it would have been better five or six years ago or not. That I'm not gonna argue that, but... Would we have been better five or six years ago? <laughs> You are still good. <laughs> Perfect. You know what this means in Italian? Zip it or not? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Can I ask you something more? <laughs> because your beak is wet enough. <laughs> in Italy, in every village, uh, people make wine and uh, they use their own native indigenous grape varieties. I think it's very uh, particular yeah. because uh, it's different from uh, uh, many other countries. Yeah. So in, uh, the only other place I know where, where the uh, percentage of people uh, making wine, making their own wine, is uh, very high. Previously on uh, YouTube, yeah. I saw people uh, make wine from uh, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> they put the yeast in yeah. and they fer and, ferment and it. If you have a fermentable source of sugar, mm. you can make wine. Yeah. The uh, limiting factor with uh, fermenting Dr. Pepper or an, an, an any other soda would be whether or not there are any preservatives in it that could inhibit the yeast. That's one thing. And then the second thing is that you would need a yeast that was tolerant of uh, the carbon dioxide. Kicking out, that would be called a barrow-tolerant uh, yeast strain. You know, when you're doing that, you have to be sure that the sugar that's there, no matter how sweet it is, is a fermentable sugar. Yeah. And uh, what do you mean by uh, fermentable sugar? Some sugars are more fermentable than others. When they tell you that a wine has been fermented to dryness, mm -hmm. Strictly speaking, that's not the case. That it has been fermented to the point where there is no fermentable sugar left, even mm. though the actual sugar content is 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Uh, sorbitol, mm -hmm. which is a uh, sugar alcohol, which is found in some uh, chewing gums, and it's difficult to, uh, to ferment until it gets into your gastrointestinal tract. The bacteria in their intestines then say, mm, yum, take it, they ferment it part way, some of it, and they produce methane, which smells bad, mm -hmm. carbon dioxide, so they blow up and now they're farting mm -hmm. uh, all day long. All day long. All day, <laughs> day long. long. All day. All day. <laughs> all day long. <laughs> Everywhere you see, they're farting in the street all day long. <laughs> I don't know how we got there from Italian wine, but... <laughs> Come and visit us at Great Wine to You! 이럴 때니 와인 네이버 밴드를 놀러 오시면 와인을 잘 몰라도 편하고 싸게 살수 있는 정보가 많이 올라와 있습니다. 가입하는 게 싫으시면 greatwine2u.co.kr로 꼭 놀러 오세요.